Over the years, Tesla has continued to innovate its electric vehicles and battery architecture. And the latest breakthrough has tech enthusiasts excited about the possibilities. So what improvements have Tesla made to the humble lithium-ion cell battery? Welcome to Tech Mania. Today, we're exploring Tesla's latest unveiling. In the new Tesla battery breakthrough is the future. People have previously compared Tesla's CEO, Elon Musk, to the likes of eccentric billionaire comic book heroes such as Bruce Wayne and Tony Stark. But with this new breakthrough in energy storage, the comparison is becoming eerily accurate. While it may not be at the same level as Iron Man's signature arc reactor, Tesla's new tabless battery cells are a significant leap forward in battery technology, propelling the company's fully electric cars towards the future. Just give it a few years before Elon starts fighting crime in a fully mechanized suit. Elon's Electric Jet Elon Musk has, for a long time, been fascinated with the idea of an electric plane. You can see his enthusiasm as early as 2010 when he had a cameo in Iron Man 2, where he proposed the idea to Tony Stark himself. Ironic, as the idea is perfectly in line with the eccentricity of comic book billionaires like Tony Stark himself. Unfortunately, the technology of our current time has kept this idea within Elon's head. He himself has predicted that a futuristic zero-emissions jet would require a battery pack with a density of 400 watt-hours per kilogram. Rather than just running an experiment in a lab, this battery would really need to be produced in volume. The main problem is density. While it may be possible for a single power source to supply enough energy to get a plane to fly, it will simply be too big to be practical, unable to overcome the force of gravity due to the plane being too heavy. Annoyingly, the actual flying of this hypothetical jet is not too difficult to imagine. Once the plane is already in flight, it doesn't actually need that much energy to cruise. Similarly, the plane can land just fine without requiring too much help, using gravitational potential energy to cunningly avoid having to expend a high amount of energy. The main problem is takeoff. Think how a rocket flying into space only needs its large thrusters initially, throwing them off as soon as possible. Should we even care about this? While some people view this idea as simply the fantasies of a man with too much money to spend, the benefits of having a zero-emissions method of aerial transport cannot be understated. Once we conquer the air, everything else is trivial. If this dream can actually become a reality, we may see in the near future a transportation network that is completely free of emissions, whether you travel in your self-driving car or on a cruise across the world. That being said, we should probably focus on making our cars respectful to the environment first. The World Resources Institute found that while transport emissions accounted for 24% of the world's carbon dioxide emissions in 2016, road-based transport accounted for 72% of those emissions. Even Musk himself has been pragmatic about the whole idea, saying in a 2018 interview that the electric jet isn't necessarily right now compared to electric cars. But let's allow ourselves to delve a bit into the future, maybe after we solve zero emissions for cars. A study has shown that, in the US, the aviation industry is one of the fastest growing sources of emissions. Since 1990, emissions from domestic aviation have increased by 17% and account for 9% of the US transportation sector's greenhouse gas emissions. Also pointed out in this study was that flights that depart from airports in the US and our territories create almost one quarter of global passenger transport-related carbon emissions, the majority of which come from domestic flights. So while aviation may not be the biggest elephant in the room right now, it could certainly become a problem in the near future. Maybe, just maybe, this fantastical idea could have some practical merit to it. All it needs is a strong enough battery to get the thing in the air. The Breakthrough in typical Elon fashion, an event named Battery Day was hyped to extremes, the Tesla CEO promising that the problem with battery density would finally be solved in a single unveiling. He didn't disappoint. On 22nd September 2020, Tesla announced what they were calling a tabless battery that would apparently decrease the production costs of their electric cars to make them competitive with traditional gas-powered vehicles. The main goal of the battery was to reduce Tesla's cost per kilowatt hour, 
which is essentially the de facto standard that measures the capacity of battery packs in modern day electric vehicles. If a car manufacturer can lower this cost, then they'll gain a serious advantage in the market. How does it work? Musk advised that Tesla achieved this breakthrough by removing the tab. The tab is a part of the battery that forms a connection between the cell and what it is powering. These cells, which Tesla is officially naming 4680 cells, will apparently give the company's batteries a 500% increase in energy capacity. This makes them a whopping six times more powerful and enabling a 16% increase in the range on the company's vehicles. In terms of size, these new batteries are actually bigger than the ones currently in the electric cars produced by the company, despite removing a component from the design spec. These new batteries measure in at a snug 46 millimeters by 80 millimeters, giving them their official name of 4680. Musk claims that these performance improvements will result in a 14% decrease in cost per kilowatt hour at the cell form factor level only. Drew Bagliano, Tesla's VP for powertrain and energy, said that Tesla's engineers laser patterned the existing foils in the cell to create a shingled spiral that results in a shorter electrical path length of 50 millimeters versus the existing 250 millimeter length in the current cells. You actually have a shorter path length for the electron to travel in a large tabless cell than you have in the smaller cell with tabs. Musk added, so even though the cell is bigger, it actually has more power. The technology is there, but can it be mass manufactured for practical use? This all sounds well and good, but how are these cells actually going to be produced? Tesla have had some tough times in the past with producing their power cells. In 2018, Panasonic, the company that Tesla had been delegating the production of their batteries to, ran into a shortage of cells leading up to the big release of the Model 3, one of Tesla's most hyped up cars. This has created some tension between Musk and Panasonic CEO Kazuhiro Tsuga, with Musk criticizing Panasonic's apparent subpar pace of battery production claiming that it constrained the Model 3 and the Model Y. Tsuga has predicted that, if Tesla continues to make bold rapid expansion, that its batteries will run out. Tesla is taking the DIY approach. So with these new batteries, Musk wanted to do it right. And as the old saying goes, if you want something done right, you're going to have to do it yourself. In a bold, potentially risky move, Tesla are now going to produce their batteries in-house, which is a decision that was known to many before its official announcement due to leaked photos, patent applications, and published research by Tesla's battery research team. Hopefully, manufacturing the batteries in-house will remove any of the bottlenecks that the Tesla team experienced when they outsourced the production to Panasonic. That being said, the band isn't exactly breaking up just yet. Tesla still wants to do business with Panasonic, claiming that they will continue to use batteries supplied by Panasonic, China's CATL, South Korea's LG Chem, and other companies. To add insult to injury, Tesla plans to step up the amount of batteries they purchase from third-party sources, going all-in on their electric car-focused business model. It's a smart idea. You don't want to burn bridges when you want to make sure that your new breakthrough is delivered as well as it can be. What does this mean for the electric jet? But let's delve back into that fantastical mind of Elon's again. What does this whole thing mean for his future plans of an electric jet? Well, do you remember what Elon said was the threshold for battery density when he was talking about the future of an electric jet? He said that it would require a battery pack with a density of 400 watt hours per kilogram. And wouldn't you know it, the new 4680 batteries apparently have that exact density. So, could this dream soon become a reality? It's definitely possible. All thanks to this incredible breakthrough in battery technology. Obviously, we should take these claims with a grain of salt. This was in a tweet after all. And besides, the battery is only a small part of the process. There's a lot that goes into a plane other than its energy source. Is it even possible to generate the force needed to lift off a plane with purely electric, carbon-free sources? If there's anyone that'll be able to find out, it'll surely be Tony Stark. I mean, Elon Musk.